There's a big holler tree down the road here yeah, for me, waggity down the dollar or two. You go down the bend and you come back again. There's a jug full of good old mountain dew. Hey, folks, my name's Popcorn Sutton, and I'm here to teach you how to make my famous cornmeal mash. Now, y'all might be assuming that an Appalachian feller swigging a jug of moonshine out in the woods ain't nothing but a hillbilly. And on that note, you're mostly right. But being a hillbilly out here ain't not a bad thing. And the folks making the moonshine in these here Appalachian mountains came a hundred years before y'all ever decided to call us a hillbilly. In fact, it was the early settlers from the British Isles that brought over stills and knowledge from their making of whiskey using barley and oats. I come from a long line of folks who started using these tricks with corn. And then I came along and I perfected my famous recipe using the cornmeal. Now, I was born in North Carolina in 1946, and I lived most of my life in Tennessee. Now, I ain't no stranger to trouble, but I got good at avoiding the law so I could make money cashing in on the bootlegging of whiskey all over Tennessee. Now that y'all know a little bit about me, and how I learned these techniques, let's get right down to it. To make enough cornmeal mash for a five-gallon bucket, you're going to need a five-gallon bucket, two and a half pound of cornmeal, five pound of sugar, three-quarter ounce of yeast, and five gallons of water. Now here's what you do. You take the two and a half pound of cornmeal, Come look right here, and you pour it right down here in this bucket, just like that. And then, you grab your five pound of sugar, and you pour it right there on top of it. Just like there. And what you gonna do now, you're gonna take your wooden spoon, stir it all up. Next, we're gonna add some boiling water. Get one gallon of your water and boil her up good. Take your boiling water and you're going to pour it over your mixture. Well, that's a little hot, shit. Take your boiling water and you're going to pour it over your mixture like this. And then you're going to get your spoon and you're going to stir it up. And just keep a stirring until it gets all mixed together. Now you're gonna keep on a stirring here until you all mix together. And you're gonna let her sit a spell. Let her cool off. Cause it's mighty hot out here. The other four gallon of water into your bucket and you fill it on up to the five gallon mark, which is about five times. Now the temperature of the water needs to be hot to touch, but not enough to burn yourself. That's just about right. And now what you're going to do is you're going to add your three quarter ounces of yeast. And you're just going to let it sit right there on top. And together, you're going to cover your bucket and let it start to work. It's been five days, and this is what your mixture should look like after all the uh, yeast has eaten all the sugar. And instead of being sweet right now, it should be super sour. So we're going to taste it. Oh, wait, that's about as sour as my first ex-wife. Although Popcorn Sutton is well known for making cornmeal mash and moonshine, he did leave out some important information about the process of fermentation using cornmeal. Cornmeal is made from drying kernels of corn and then grinding them into a powder. Cornmeal is used in this recipe for its flavor and to provide some of the sugar in the mixture. The majority of the glucose comes from table sugar, sucrose, which is a disaccharide that solubilizes into fructose and glucose. The addition of boiling water to the cornmeal and sugar allows for glucose monomers to be released 
for use by the yeast added later. Allowing the mixture to cool to room temperature before adding the yeast is important for creating an environment that they can thrive in. The active dry yeast used belongs to the species Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is a single-celled eukaryotic microorganism. The addition of dry yeast to the warm mixture allows them to activate or bloom on the surface of the liquid. The yeasts are responsible for creating ethanol in the process of fermentation. Within the yeast, one molecule of glucose can enter glycolysis to produce two molecules of pyruvate, using two NAD plus to produce two NADH in the process. Instead of entering the citric acid cycle and oxidative phosphorylation, the two molecules of pyruvate are decarboxylated to form two molecules of acetaldehyde. The two molecules of CO2 lost during this step result in the bubbles seen on the surface of the mixture as fermentation proceeds. Using 2-NADH, the 2-acetaldehyde are reduced to two molecules of ethanol. 2-NAD plus are regenerated for another round of glycolysis and fermentation. The creation of ethanol is the goal in the fermentation of the cornmeal mash, and a specific gravity hydrometer can be used to estimate the percent alcohol content of the final product. Here's Popcorn Sutton to explain his calculations. When we started this here project, the specific gravity of this liquid was 1.045. And right now, as you can see, the specific gravity is zero, which means the yeast has eaten all the sugar and converted it into alcohol. And we have a little formula we use in the backwoods and it works pretty much everywhere else. We take the be beginning specific gravity and we subtract the final specific gravity and you get a number. Now here it is. Beginning specific gravity is 1.045. The ending specific gravity is 1.00. So you take your 0 0.045 and you multiply it times 131.25 and that comes to 5.9 percent alcohol now if you want to make this a little bit stronger because i really wouldn't drink this right here you need yourself a good old steel but you know what that's for another video so we'll talk to you later bye folks Cut out like that in the bottom, that V shape cut out. So when that steam comes down, it can escape out in there and come up back up in this keg. And then it comes over and hits this worm. And when it gets in that barrel of cold water wire, it turns back into a liquid and comes out the bottom 180 proof. Now put it down there. Whoa, hold it, hold it. Now. Huh, now, JB, you can start laying the face to the cap and hand me a little over here, and I'll start over here. You've done a good job on that paste. Yeah, it makes it a few rounds of it. You have to push this paste at every connection. You gotta make paste out of bran and flour, or you can grind up rye and make paste out of it, or you can make paste out of oatmeal. I ain't never made a perfect run in my life if something doesn't go wrong. I mean, something will go wrong every run you make. I guarantee something will happen today, and I hope not nothing major like blow a cap or something, but uh, I gotta hurry up and get some paste on this cause it'll, if I don't get it on there pretty quick, it'll not stick. Listen that. You hear it? Yep. Yeah, I hear it. 
once it starts running, you have to always keep on the lookout for leaks. Because it'll leak somewhere. <laughs>